Hello, everyone. <laughs> so I'll start very briefly introducing myself. So obviously, I'm working for Red Hat in the JBoss division, which is where we mostly work with Java and uh, JVM-related technologies. And uh, well, from this planet, I really mean uh, I've been living around in several places in Europe. I'm half Dutch, half Italian. I'm living in Newcastle now. And uh, well, I'm proud to be made global in that sense. <laughs> And I'm part of the Hibernate team, where I focus on Hibernate Search, which is the integration between uh, Lucene and uh, Hibernate. And more recently on Hibernate OGM, which is a grid object, grid mapper. So we are going to be able to store and migrate applications on other NoSQL engines. And I deal part of my time on uh, Infinispan, which is uh, strongly related to this talk now. And uh, so we'll see that. I, very occasionally, I have worked a bit on, contributed a bit on these other projects on the bottom. But let's go ahead. So what are we going to talk about? So obviously, it's strongly related to Apache Lucene and to Infinispan, because they are very, very, very integrated in, in various ways. And among the different ways they can be used together, I'm going to specifically focus on the Infinispan Lucene directory which is uh, basically a way to store indexes inside the Infinispan data grid and see what kind of benefits you can get out of it and if it might suit what you might need or if maybe you should avoid it and have better ideas. So going on about it, what is Apache Lucene? Well, this is the single slide I have about it, and I'm not going to tell more because I really think that everybody here knows what it is, and so that saves me a lot of time because I just have 20 minutes. In other conferences, I have to talk like 40 minutes to explain what Lucene is and then maybe talk a little bit of what we're doing about it. Everybody's fine with that light? Um, is somebody needing an introduction on Lucene? Oh, perfect. That's what I was assuming about this audience. <laughs> okay. So I can focus a bit of time on Infinispan. Because in this case, I guess that not many have heard of it. Even if it is a core component in some of our technologies, it is not really well uh, known outside of the usual communities we work with. So how many of you heard about Infinispan? OK, well, a bit better than I was expecting. I, I strongly wanted to come to this conference, but my managers were like, uh, what? Never heard of this conference. And they was like saying, well, they likely never heard of us. <laughs> so shortly, it is an in-memory data grid, which just means it is, uh, in the core, it is a key value store. And uh, particularly, it is able to basically take advantage of the memory that you have on multiple nodes together so that you can join this, this memory. And uh, since memory is getting cheaper and cheaper, but it's still not that convenient to, be, to, to buy a single very big a beefy machine, but you still want to distribute to multiple nodes, then that's where Infinispan is focusing on. And um, what, what is really distinguishing Infinispan among other of the technologies that we are talking about here in this conference is Infinispan is strongly memory oriented. It's not writing anything on disk. It, it has some options that we are going to see, but it, it's all about how efficiently and very quickly store and retrieve data from memory. And it has some cluster modes, which we're going to see. And the cache loaders are what we use to offload things from memory to other stores. We'll see that again. And let's just go ahead. So it's an LGPL licensed. It's developed in the, well, let's say, JBoss community and around. But there are many more active contributors. And this was a surprise. I always think, think Infinispan was a, is a bit young, but I've just seen the timeline. It's, it's almost five years now. And so how does it look like to use Infinispan? As I said, it's a map-like key value store. The, the project lead is working together with other experts on the GSR 107, which is JavaX cache, cache interface. It's not finalized, right? Right? There is there one expert. <laughs> And um, so it's going to implement this, uh, this interface, this API, and it's likely going to implement as well JSR 347, which is just started, so it's very new to say something about it. And on top of the map like a, a key value store, it has some asynchronous APIs and uh, some other methods to say, like time, uh, expiry time for values that are storing it. 
going it in practice. This is how it looks like. So it's very, very simple to get used to it, and it implements the Java concurrent hash map. So just map, but as well the atomic operations like put if absent in it. And that turns out it's pretty easy to replace any kind of uh, own self-made caches that you might have in your application, which most of the time just use a map or something. And the day you need to join multiple nodes or have problems with like that, it, it should be pretty easy to uh, just replace the implementation in your code with an InfiniSpan instance. So what does it mean, distribute data in this case? Well, at the very bottom, it just means that inside the GVM, because InfiniSpan is an on GVM project, right? So it's mostly written in Java. There are some bits in Scala. There are some clients for other languages, but the main bits are Java. And so all your data is going to live inside the JVM, stored in, in, in the same application, uh, in the same VM as your application to get it by reference. And the different InfiniSpan containers, they are connected between each other on network. And they're connected via JGroups. JGroups is another project in the JBoss community. And what it basically boils down to, it's a toolkit for reliable multicast communication. So it's not going to use HTTP or any high-level APIs from networking. It's going right down, down to the wire, to, to buffer sizes, UDP packages, and the lowest level possible that the JVM is able to expose to us. That gets its top efficiency, but on, to get some reliability on UDP where we need it, so if Finispan makes use of a very different option that you get at the networking level to try getting maximum performance out of it. That's why it needs JGroups to use all these options at its best and get the level of reliability, ordering, and resend of packages that it needs. I mentioned client for other languages. Uh, so it's possible to connect to InfiniSpan nodes from, uh, from other languages remotely, so not living in the same JVM. It's using three possible, it's offering three possible alternatives. One is uh, memcache, so it offers a memcache server, so you can use any memcache client or application which already uses memcache, you can replace it with an InfiniSpan cache. Obviously, pretty easy, there is a REST war which exposes the, the, con the content from the InfiniSpan in a REST API. And Hotrod, Hotrod is a custom uh, proprietary protocol which uh, takes advantage of some of the knowledge of uh, the InfiniSpan grid to get higher performance than what we can get with memcached or REST, which are more for compatibility and ease of use. Very briefly, what does it mean, a consistent hashing? Because that's all about what it is in distribution. So where are your data? The, the different server nodes that are part of a grid, they are arranged on a wheel that's called the consistent hash wheel because it's going to be deterministic where a, a, a specific node is going to be positioned on this wheel. And it's going to be deterministic as well where different replicas of your data are positioned on the wheel. Um, this is for the distribution mode of uh, InfiniSpan, which means the data is not going to be replicated in the same way to every node but it's going to be replicated on a subset of nodes which are, again, deterministically determinate, depending on which nodes are alive or at a specific moment. Uh, the advantage that we get out of this is that you can kill nodes randomly to re resize your cluster down. You just shut down services, and when you need more power or more memory, the only thing you have to do is you have to start more nodes having the service the nodes will auto-discover each other, they will reform the cluster, rebalance the values around each other, and it can continue on working. And while you're doing all of this, you have transactions as well. And uh, CloudTM is a research project we are taking part of, and they're doing uh, very nice uh, improvements on uh, all kind of possible transaction levels that we can implement on, on InfiniSpan and get still very interesting performance out of it. Of course, it means it implements GTA with GTA XA. You can recover transactions in case of crashes and have proper um, transaction manager. So integration with other transactional systems as well. It is part of the uh, JBoss server where it takes, it is the core component where the application server uses to 
implement replication cluster failover caching and integrates with mod cluster but i'm skipping to what matters for us of course you might not want to keep all your precious data in memory and here it comes with the cache stores it can uh, offload the writes that are happening in the grid directly to a cache loader, which is just an SPI for us, uh, an integration point. And there exist many uh, possible alternatives already. There is a Cassandra one, which is obviously very nice when you have a lot of writes. You have an HBase implementation. You can write to GDBC clouds, and there are many more other options. It's pretty easy to implement one if you have some kind of custom store in that you need to, to use. And um, one interesting thing is that these uh, cache stores can be configured to be written to asynchronously. So you can still have high performance from the writes in, in memory directly, keeping high availability because it's going to write in memory on multiple nodes, which gets you to the maximum speed that your network can reach, which is often an order of magnitude faster than what you can get on disk six or just any disk controller. So you can be relatively feel safe about that your data is not going to be lost if your single node goes down and there is no track anywhere about it. But it's, it's, it can keep several copies and you can configure how many copies you want of that. And then it can write through the cache loader asynchronously from the memory replicas. So you get a little bit of the best of two worlds. And anyway, in a cloud environment, if your single server goes down, even if you were replicating synchronously on the disk, but if the node is gone, you, you would have to phone the, 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 the cloud provider and ask him, can I have a recovery of the disk or something? That's, that's very hardly that they will be able to handle such a request for you. So that just doesn't work. Sorry, I skipped one. No. Yes, let's go on on the scene. Um, so there is a little uh, problem that we had using uh, different applications sharing a single uh, Lucene index, which is the, the single writer lock. So only one application uh, is able to uh, write to the same index at the same time. That's not a big limitation because the single index writer is uh, multi-threaded, so you can have multiple threads write through it, and the performance of an index writer is very high. But still, it must be the single JVM which is writing to it. If you have different JVMs which are writing to the same index, you need to either take turns, like token around, or you have to delegate. So this is how we know some applications are doing it. In particular, I mentioned that I work on Hibernate Search. This is the pattern that Hibernate Search has been using for uh, a long while. Basically, all the JVMs they, they pick one which is pick it as like the master and he will be responsible for writing to the index. Everybody else has to send him requests. Can you please delete this document from the index? Can you please add these documents to the index? And the master will write through it. So it, it might look like a scalability problem. In practice, it very rarely is because the master, as I said, the, the index writer can be quite efficient and it's not that much data in the real problems. And then you copy over from this master reference to a reference that others can copy, like a snapshot, and then you snapshot this back to the local index. The, the problem with this approach is the, the time it takes for a round trip. So if you have real time needs and, well, you have to copy stuff around and it's pretty messy to configure. It takes times to test and many parts which break. So how does it work exactly to store something in an index? Um, very briefly, the Lucene directory is split in uh, segments. So there are several files which maintain uh, the, the contents of the index, which constantly evolves, like Uwe was just saying here an hour ago. But I don't deal exactly what is in these files. Um, we just look at it as segments and bytes arrays. And then we have a part of index metadata and a write lock, which traditionally in Lucene is just a physical write lock on the file system, but this is abstracted in a lock factory, luckily. And, well, let's keep it simple on the sizes. So the same things can be very easily just replicated as byte arrays which are stored inside the grid. Mm. And we do some little things in it. It basically, the, if you look at it, the project is very small. It is just a couple of classes and hundreds of tests. 
mostly concurrent tests. Uh, the only little problem is that segments might be very large and uh, we don't want to deal with very large objects because they are not efficient to be dealt with in Infinispan, so they are uh, fragmented in smaller pieces and reassembled in this after distribution. When that happens, it might need uh, read locks on the group of, uh, of segment chunks. And uh, they should be avoided because you can get even faster performance having just many smaller segments. But you can get that just tuning the merger for, for that kind of operations. So this is how it looks like in the end. Uh, you still need the master thing because we didn't deal with any kind of uh, multiple writer scenario because that, that would have been too complex, too tricky. Many changes required, possibly in Lucene, and I also doubt that the rest of the team would have liked something because it's not really needed. But um, you can still delegate to the, to the writer on the master. The, the writer will write as soon as committed everybody, all the index readers on the other side, as soon as you refresh them, they will see the, the update. And of course, I would expect you to pick a cache loader somewhere, so you could like off store it to your, uh, if you're running it on the cloud, take S3, or if you're running it locally, pick Cassandra or HBase, anything which just writes it there somewhere persistent. So you can even shut down everything and restart it. As an example, this was initially developed but sponsored as a patch for Jira or Jira because Jira uses Lucene internally and it was very hard to scale it. So what it does is all the indexes are written on top of the Infinispan directory, which is then replicated around and to, to scale up or down Jira, you just have to start more instances or turn it down. And well, just some thoughts about it. Uh, the tuning you might know generally is different. Uh, so maybe some of the options are not that, are not really suited for this kind of use case, and generally this can be much faster because uh, a network is much faster than disks. Even if you are having nice new solid state drives, or if you tend to buy arrays of RAID of solid state drives, it it might be just a question of cost that it gets cheaper to use network. And I said that already. I'm running out of time, so just go to the juicy part. So clearly, I, as on the title, I disclaim this is um, just to give you a very rough idea. I totally don't think that this is going to be performance that you will get in your application. It is very hard to pick one use case and say, this is my reference. So it's going to vary extremely on depending on what you are doing with it. But generally, I have been performance testing it just to make sure that we are not far off from the e standard uh, Lucene implementations, that it doesn't have a tremendous overhead. And I'm relatively happy with it. Um, some words on how to interpret this. So this is a test which is writing as fast as it can and at the same time running queries as fast as it can. So since you're writing all the time, this has a, a big impact on what the queries are able to do at the same time because every write is going to invalidate all the caches over and over. So the, the, the quicker you are on writing, the more the, the queries are going to be penalized in these graphs. So you should never look at the queries part without considering the value which is on the left side to interpret this correctly. So you can see that clearly the run directory is the quickest one for this is a sequence of many small uh, writes and every time it's committing. So it is really more like stressing the I.O. of the different parts. And well, the different Infinispan things there, I'm injecting network delays, artificial network delays, to simulate what would happen with a local network, single node, a, a fast network, or maybe a cross data center replication. And since uh, it uses asynchronous calls, it doesn't matter that much. And you can see that well, the Infinispan is a bit faster than the FS directory, a bit slower than the RAM directory, which is exactly what I would expect. And at the right side, you can see that the RAM directory is the slowest running queries, um, but that is mostly because of the internal caches are invalidated all the time. Also because the RAM directory, when I've run this, I've seen they improved it recently, but when I've run this, it is heavily synchronized, so not really optimal for uh, concurrent, not improved. 
Okay, so it's still valid. <laughs> yes, okay, and now you can see also that there are good reasons for that. So InfiniSpan is of the opposite. It's optimized for concurrent usage, so it, it has a little advantage on that. Still, I'm not really saying why oh, we're faster, because it is obviously slower on writes. Anyway, this is just because I know people would ask about performance, but it really is not about the, fit, the, the figures here. It's about the fact that those are static values, and these, these can scale up linearly. So you can just add more nodes, and you will be able to run more queries per second, just running them on other things. What's next? Well, obviously, Finispan 5.2 is coming out. 6 is being planned as well. Lucene 4 is coming out, so I'm going to update everything for this. Dynamic chunk sizes, it's not that important. We're running out of time. I don't explain it. I'm building a, an ad hoc cache store, which basically delegates to the FS directory of Lucene, because that's pretty optimal. It's, it, it, I, I see there are many different implementations which are optimized heavily for different uh, uh, operating systems. So why not delegate directly to it to have it do the I.O. operations, because it's pretty much designed exactly for these use cases, so it's OK. And I sent a pull request about it to load data from an existing index already. So it's not going to store yet. It might be a new feature. And basically, that's it. You can find the project on GitHub. And to conclude, um, it's pretty easy to run on clouds. It, uh, the fact that InfiniSpan is transactional means that your Lucene index updates can participate in transaction as well. If you're writing things on the index and then you roll back their transaction, all the changes on the grid will be rolled back as well. So that, that opens kind of some possibilities which weren't even before. If there are any questions, if I have time for questions, <laughs> one or two. I've been too fast. <laughs> Anyway, I'm here around for long. Yes? Yeah, in, in your comparison, yeah. I, I, in, in, doesn't work. Oh, ah. yeah. uh, in your comparison, uh, what uh, FS directory was in fact used behind? The Ooh. default one for yes. the platform? No, okay. It was the memory map implementation. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm running all the tests on Linux. Beca I really because I've seen it was a lot of faster on reading. Yes, but uh, it, than it, on writing, yeah. It, it, yeah, yeah. It also is that fast because um, because the writes are slow, so it can reuse yeah. the caches a bit better. <laughs> In fact, it works directly on the cache. <laughs> yeah. No more questions? You can talk to me anytime if you get a doubt later. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>